David, what game will you be running for me today? Oh, shoot. You were actually serious about me running a game for you? Uh, okay. So, uh, crap, I guess I can combine our discussion about cartoons with my own creation. I'm trying to make a game that'll be free on our website, conquercreations.com. I have absolutely zero intention on selling the thing, and I want everyone to try it out. Tune in. The game will also be in the public domain, so you can change the rules if you don't like them, change the setting, or do whatever the bleeding hell you want to do with it. I've intended it to appeal to the old cartoons of the 1930s, but I've also written some bits to appeal with the anime weep crowd. Now I'll admit, I'm still writing this system, but let's talk about it th some. The system is a 2d6 system, with an opposed role sort of way of going about it. Some cases are just, should the GM allow, like with stealth, because I didn't write a perception system. I might still change that before official release, we'll see. At the moment, the system has four attributes, which are like ability scores, but there's no score to the abilities. There's power, which is you for hitting things, speed, which is your, well, zoomies, stretch, which could be argued as dexterity, I guess, and noisiness, which could be argued as being stealth, but something else should you choose. Each one of these has two skills tied to them and at least one extra slot too that could be filled with anything you or your GM wants to put there. Which makes me realize one of the abilities I had written down is kind of useless when I think about it and I'll probably throw it out. Power has hit and block which is to do just that, hit things with a weapon or object, or block weapons or objects. Speed has run and slide. Run is sort of your initiative, while slide is your ability to not be stopped while moving. Stretch has grab and dodge. Grab is for grappling or gripping onto ledges and such, while dodge is to dodge out of ranged attacks. And for noisiness, I have written as having sneak and ventriloquism, which I might change the latter one, I don't know. At the moment, you've got 20 points to spend across all 8 plus of these skills. You can bring each one to a max of 8 points, and when you roll that skill, you'll add that amount. But you don't need to add any points to any skill. You could put two points into everything, making yourself a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Or you could hyper focus on a couple of them, making yourself skilled in just that with four more somewhere else. It's pretty obvious that I really enjoy classless dice systems. They're fun to me. Being able to make whatever custom abomination and creations you want. Of course, a cartoon character needs to have special little things they can do, right? Well, that goes into abilities. At character creation, you'll get two basic abilities of your choice. These abilities very rarely get actual bonuses, but instead expand upon what you can do with certain objects or skills. For example, the basic ability Oversized Pocket, it allows you to carry more with you and fit it on your person at any given moment. Splat Flat essentially lets you ignore so many hits with certain types of weapons. Insane Mentality lets you be more of a tech nerd. And there's more. You can choose any of these. Don't be afraid to reflavor and change typing to make said ability more fitting in your setting. Like, the magic abilities, but not playing a magic setting? Ask your GM or director, as I call them in this game, to change magic type to maybe psychic type, or something like that. Absolutely zero shame in doing that. Later on, you can purchase advanced abilities in order to 
do more crazy stuff with more options. Combine a few of the things, give your character a contrasting personality or whatever have you. Each of these advanced abilities have a cost in a number of scene points, which you get for how many things in the scene you have to roll against in any given scenario. I'm trying to place an even amount of abilities marked as realistic and magic, but the cartoon logic abilities vastly outweigh the other ones. I did that because the game is intentionally designed to be funny, and to be silly little romp sort of thing. Then we've got equipment to get. I've not written down what all items there are, but I've written down kind of what you'll choose. Most of your items will be flavor intended, except for one that every cartoon character needs. Their signature weapon. This may be a rifle, like you're hunting a wascally wabbit, or it may be a hammer, like you're a daft duck. Different weapons can be used for different things and in different ways. I'm also working on damage types as well as I write the weapon options. So far I have blunt, sharp, and pierce, which as I say that I realize two of those come out of Monster Hunter, but I'm not likely to change that. Each signature weapon also comes with a backfire on them. It's what happens when someone other than your character uses said item, whether they're friend or foe. Of course, clothes are just a flavor item. Most cartoon characters only have one set of clothing they wear, right? Except that one cartoon with the spies from the early 2000s. If you know, you know. Clothes are not all that important, but there's a lot of jokes that can be done in certain situations with certain kinds of clothes. I mean, how many jokes were made in the Looney Tunes with Bugs Bunny wearing a dress? Will I change this? It's very well possible. Who knows? I'm hoping to give this game out before the end of the month, but let's talk about how the game works. Now, each round is divided into four phases, order, movement, action, and resolve. Order is the first step. Everyone rolls a run skill in to figure out the initiative order. Once everyone rolls order, you'll fight over who goes first. Does the highest go first? Does the lowest go first? Does the one with the closest date of their birth go first? Does the one who got the number closest to the director wrote without going over go first? Now, this can be done only once, or it can be at the beginning of every round. How you go about it is the director's choice. Personally, I prefer the idea that it's rolled every round. That way, there's always a chance that the guy with the lowest run skill can go first. It makes things more random and hilarious nature in the game. Then will come the movement phase. Everyone goes in order, whatever order that is. You can use either a grid map or a hexagonal map. I find myself preferring the hexagonal maps. I don't know why, I just do. In either situation, you can move six places from any flat end to of where your character is. So if you're using a square map, you really end three places away from your starting point if you move in a diagonal line. But in a hex map, you could end further away. For those that don't like this, I want to point out that this is essentially what ends up happening in 3.5 Dungeon Dragons or Pathfinder 1st Edition because it always ends in a circle. Meanwhile, 5th Edition, your movement is square shaped for some reason. But if you want to go further, you can sprint. Sprinting takes your action, which will allow you to roll a run skill and move that number of places. Some directors may say you need to run in a straight line, or you have to use the entire amount rolled. Up to the director, really. Then comes actions. Actions are essentially your attacks, your combat maneuvers, or your ability uses. 
you'll go in order again. So if you go first, you'll declare your action and then you can either keep track of it or roll it against the appropriate target skill. Resolve is the last step. If you roll during the action phase, you use this to remove models off the map or figure out who's got what buffs and debuffs doing what. If you didn't roll during the action phase, you'll go through the order again, then roll everything appropriate. Then do what was rolled if you had rolled previously, keeping removing models and keeping track of buffs and debuffs. Honestly, I recommend rolling during the action phase, it'll take less remembering. Now, I still got some stuff to write for this game, but it's a good thing you're here to help me out with that, right, Lion? Right. Let's start this up. I hope you know what you're doing. So do I. So, while you're filling out the sheet, I guess I'll grab the stuff and shove off.